Yeah. We're getting ready for the press conference here for Texas A&M Corpus Christi, Southeast Missouri. First game of March Madness, first four. Final score, Islanders 75, Red Hawks 71. Check one, check two. Twenty three and four. <clears throat> and that's for As a, as a courtesy, 
we we please ask that uh, media members and those that are here joining us for the press conference uh, please silence your cell phones also uh, in regards to questions uh, please provide your name and media affiliation uh, each time you ask a question and then if you're joining us via zoom we ask that you please uh, use the hand function and we'll get to you uh, we are recording the press conference and uh, we ask that you please um, please do not use uh, cell phones or cameras cell phones or cameras uh, prohibited uh, the final score what a game 75 uh, 71 as a historic moment for uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi as the Islanders win their first ever uh, tournament game uh, in March Madness the NCAA tournament a really exciting moment uh, for the program and we are thrilled uh, to have up here on the stage uh, Jalen Jackson who finishes with 22 points and six rebounds was 14 of 18 from the foul line. Uh, Ross Williams off the bench, 13 points uh, this evening, and uh, their head coach, Steve Lutz. Coach, uh, we'll start um, with uh, your thoughts on the contest and your team's victory here tonight. Um, I thought it was a great opening game for the NCAA tournament. I mean, you know, you had a, a a lot of energy, a lot of effort. You had, um, you know, two teams that played extremely, extremely hard and uh, gave it everything they had. Um, at the end of the day, we made a few more free throws. We got a couple more rebounds. And obviously, we were able to come out, um, you know, on the, on the victorious side. So uh, I couldn't be more excited for these guys, and I couldn't be more excited for our basketball program. But um, Brad Korn is a, is a great person. He's a really good basketball coach, and uh, man, I, I would have to think that the people of, of uh, Cape Girardeau have to be extremely happy with him and uh, you know what he's done with his team this year. So hats off to those guys. At this time, we'll open up the floor for questions, and we will start with our student athletes. Uh, so questions for, for Jalen or Ross. In the middle, on the aisle. Quentin Martinez, Corpus Christi Caller Times. Uh, Jalen, uh, you guys were in a situation where uh, in the second half you guys led by as much as 10 points. They caught you guys. Uh, wh what was the biggest key down the stretch for you guys to be able to, to find a way to pull it out uh, tonight? Um, just staying together. Uh, basketball is a game of runs, so we knew at some point they were going to make a run. We just had to stay together. Um, we rebounded. Uh, we made free throws, and, yeah, we, we, we stuck together to finish the game up. Third row. Adam Wittenberg with ESPN.com. For both, guy, both guys, what, what does it mean to be a part of the first team to, to win an NCAA tournament game? <laughs> um, uh, it means everything. Uh, this being my last year coming here, you know, uh, just talking to Coach Lutz during the recruiting process, he said, if, if you come here, you're going to get a chance to win. And uh, being able to do this with my brothers, uh, it means the world. Um, you know, and unfortunately we lost Terry on, but being able to use that as a motivational factor and to turn that around and to be able to do this for him and for him to be here with us, uh, it means the world. Jalen, your thoughts? Um, it's a surreal moment. Uh, we were in this position last year, um, but we were on the other side. Um, so we, we had a great group of guys come back. We, we lost three, three players last year, but we had a good group of guys come back and we all we all set out to, to make history, uh, first by winning conference, then winning the conference tournament, and winning some games in the uh, March Madness tournament. So to be in this moment right now, it's, it's amazing. Other questions? Second row. Quinton Martinez, Corpus Christi, Caller Times. Ross, in the first half, you provided a little bit of a lift uh, offensively. You know, they were doing everything they could to shut down Trey Tennyson, it seemed like. Uh, can, can you talk about just hitting that first shot and what it did for your confidence? Um, yeah. You know, we got a lot of talented guys on this team. And uh, one of the things that, you know, coach preaches all the time is that we're all, we're all equal in value and, you know, everybody has to step up. So, you know, when they're, when they're trying to lock down on one guy, um, I know that it's my job to come in there and just give us an energy spark. And uh, I was able to do that tonight.
And Jalen, uh, you were able to get to the line quite a bit tonight. You know, you really you were driving. Uh, you know, it was a big big part of it. Uh, when when you guys were able to to kind of get them in foul trouble early in the first half, did you did you think you guys were going to be able to to get to the line? You know, that's something you guys have been successful at this year. Um, we were we were in a double bonus early in this in the first half. Um, but we stopped applying pressure. Um, so I, during our halftime talk, uh, coach was just like, keep putting pressure on them, get to the rim, and and make the reps call a foul or finish. So that's what the that's what the second half uh, plan was. So that's what we came out and did and executed. Third row, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN again. Ross, you touched on it, but but what, what did it mean to to win this? Like you said, for Terry on, and did you have a chance to visit with him after the game? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I said, it, it means everything. Uh, being able to come here, you know, like Jalen touched on earlier, this is a team that returned a lot of guys, a lot of talent. Um, so it was, it's you know, a blessing to be able to come in and join a great group of guys, a great coaching staff, and then um, you know, Terry on, it's my roommate. I'm with him all the time, you know. So it's like when he goes down, it's super emotional. But once we got our bearings back, you know, it was a, it was a consistent theme. Like let's do this for T. Uh, T is an unselfish person. He would give you the shirt off his back. So you know, when you lose a guy like that, it, it brings the group closer together. And we know that you know we're not done yet. This is March. Question via Zoom. Uh, John, go ahead. A question for our student athletes. John Titel from Hoops HD. Uh, for Jalen, you were 14 of 18 from the line. Simo as a team was 9 of 20. My question is, have you ever taken that many free throw attempts in your life? And have you ever made more free throws than an entire team in your life? That's probably a first. Um, I can't think of any high school or middle school game where I've done that. So yeah, that's a first. And I'm I mean, I'm glad I was able to do it because it helped us get the win. Other other questions for Jalen or Ross? Gentlemen, thank you so much. Congratulations on history tonight. Best of luck looking ahead towards Thursday in Alabama. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we'll open up the floor. You, you guys are free to go. Yeah. Have fun in Birmingham. <laughs> and now uh, – a question uh, for the head coach of uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi, Steve Lutz. Yes, yeah, Steve, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN. Just wondering, how, how were, were you curious at all how your team would, would, would kind of respond without Terry on, or did you, did you have a sense of, of how, they would, how they would bounce back from that unfortunate situation? Well, um, you know, Terry on blew his knee within three minutes of the championship game, so we had to play 37 minutes without him. Um, so they responded well. I knew that um, we would have energy. I knew that we would have effort. I knew we would play well defensively. Um, but Terion is able to um, create easy baskets for us a lot of times. So I, I, I didn't know how we would score, to be very honest with you. Um, we scored differently against Northwestern State than we did against SEMO here tonight. So um, when you lose a player, um, of his magnitude, your, your offense is, is just going to continue to evolve. And a uh, good thing for us is we do have other good players on the team, but um, you know, we're still finding ourselves a little bit offensively, and, and that's to be expected when you lose a guy like that. Second row. Quentin Martinez, Corpus Christi, Caller Times. Uh, you know, how do you feel about, about uh, obviously, teams have tried to take Trey Tennyson out of the game. Uh, he's a guy that averaged 18 points during conference play. Uh, again, his shot wasn't falling tonight, uh, and uh, they did a good job trying to guard him. Uh, what's the biggest key to finding someone to, to pick up that scoring slack when, when someone's focused on a guy like that? Yeah, we, we've got to do a better job of moving the basketball and, and, and getting other people involved in the offense. And, and when they key on Trey like that, obviously Trey's got to become a screener. And, uh, you know, they're not going to help off of Trey. So if he sets a screen for his man, his man's got to have a good chance to get open. Um, so as I said, we're still kind of evolving. But, you know, the good thing about having a, a group of players that, um, you know, are all good players is that when they take Trey away, you know, that opens up the floor for Jalen Jackson to drive the ball to the basket. Right? That opens up the floor for Jalen to drive and kick to Ross Williams. Or, again, if they're going to stay attached to Trey, you can, you're just spreading the floor out and you're, you're able to throw the ball inside. So you just have to, you know, you have to adjust to the game. And, and when people do that, you know, it's a good ta tactic, obviously, but you know, you've got to then um, try to take advantage of it as well. First row, 
Mike Petralius, CLNS Media. Uh, Steve, last year obviously you were in the same position, but this year they tie the game at 64. I'm curious, what's going through your mind at that point, and what is your message to the team? Oh man, I, I'm I'm sitting there uh, saying to myself, man, you can't you, like you can't let this happen. You know, you've done a good job. You were up 10 points. You're winning at the half. You know, get your team back together and uh, get them all on the same page and and finish out the game. You know, that's what I'm thinking. You know, um, you know, you're on the biggest stage of college basketball. You're the first game of the NCAA tournament. So, you know, a little bit. You know, a, a little bit of it is you also want to make sure that your guys embrace the moment, but don't think the moment's too big. You know, it's still another basketball game, and, and we're playing a team that's a good team. Um, so as long as we can get back on track, I felt like we would be we would be fine. What was the second part of your question? Uh, your message. Yeah, my message to those guys is we don't need to hit home runs. Like, let's keep hitting singles and doubles. <laughs> you know, obviously O and D with however many seconds those are behind the back pass that's not in, in the game plan um, but it worked out for us and we got Isaac to the line and got some free throws so my, my message was for Jalen Jackson and Ross Williams and Travion Tennyson and Simeon Fryer take care of the basketball against the press if they give us an opportunity to go score a quick basket and transition go take your layup go take your wide open three otherwise run offense and, and take care of the ball and let them foul you S second row uh, in the, on the aisle uh, yeah, Jim Fox, Associated Press. Coach, your thoughts on looking forward to your next game to facing a number one seed? Um, man, they're fantastic. And, you know, they're not they're a number one seed for a reason. Um, you know, they've got really good players. They've, they're well coached. They shoot the ball. They rebound the ball, and they are awfully fast. Like if uh, if we don't get back in transition, it could be a and it could be a long night. Um, so you know, with that being said, you know we played Arizona. Um, we played Mississippi State at Mississippi State, and uh, in both those games, you know, there were times during the game, especially in the first half, where we, we were leading the game. So our guys are battle tested. They're not scared um, of the moment. They're, you know, it, you've got to go play, and, uh, you know, you've got to embrace it. But, you know, history tells you that, that uh, not many one seeds beat 16 seeds. So, you know, that's why we have the NCAA tournament, to so have situations like this where you get a chance to go shock the world. Nobody, th nobody thought St. Peter's was going to get as far as they did last year either. So that's what makes this tournament special, guys. Uh, back row, far side. Coach, uh, Chris Thomason, KIII TV in Corpus. Uh, what do you think that atmosphere is going to be like in Birmingham on Thursday? Oh, I'm sure we'll have a good crowd there, so we'll be okay. No, I mean, they're going to have a 95, 99% sellout for Alabama. I mean, it's going to be unbelievable. Um, obviously, it's going to be in their favor, so it is what it is. But uh, those ref or those fans don't make threes or free throws or layups, right? So you still have to go into the game and and uh, you know play the way you know how to play. And uh, just another one, if if I can, uh, yeah. you know, earlier this season when you guys were struggling in the middle of South and play, you know, they couldn't close out games. That was the big issue, giving up big leads. How proud of you were? down the stretch that they were able to withstand that big run. Yeah, well, I, you know, Chris, I disagree with you on struggling. We only lost four games <laughs> in league play. <laughs> but, I mean, we did have a bad week where we lost those two. Um, no, I'm extremely proud of them. I mean, if you look at the defensive numbers, though, in the second half, we, we weren't great defensively. Um, I think we allowed them to shoot almost 60% from the floor. Um, you know, so that that's not great. We've got to be better against Alabama. Um, but with – that being said, to answer your question, to find a way to win, um, I couldn't be more excited and more proud for those guys, obviously for the city, for the university, and, uh, you know, all of the Islander fans that are across the country watching this game. I mean, you know, they've got to be pretty excited tonight, I would think. Let's go back online. Uh, John via Zoom, your question to Coach. John Titel from Hoops HD. Coach, you were hired in April of 2021. I know the goal is to build a winning, successful program, but did you think a night like tonight was possible in just year number two? Of course, yeah. I mean, when we got the job, um, I, I told the guys in the summer, so in, in Division One basketball, you get to bring them in in, in June. And, uh, you know, we had a few practices, and I've been around enough um, programs and, and been around enough winning to know what winning looks like. Um, I told those guys from 
probably June all the way through that we have enough in this room to be successful. Um, we have enough in this room to win the league, to win the tournament, and go to the NCAA tournament and win games. So, um, yeah, to be honest with you, I did think that. I, I don't. I would, I would hope you don't take that as arrogance by any means. That just means I, I, we did a good job, our staff and I did a good job in recruiting, you know, coming out of COVID and that I felt like we had good enough players to be, um, you know, relevant within our league. And then obviously once we got to the NCAA tournament. Coach, we, we really appreciate your time. Congratulations on the win. Best of luck on Thursday against Alabama. No problem. Thank you. All right. The thoughts of the head coach of Texas A&M Corpus Christi, Steve Lutz as the Islanders will play a 245 on Thursday. Uh, winners here tonight, 75-71. A reminder, Hammond Communications will post the recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub. That's www.ncaaveritone.com. Transcripts are provided. ASCP will be available shortly. You're fine. You're fine. Again, just a courtesy, we ask that you please silence your cell phone. Also, uh, in asking questions, uh, state your name, uh, media affiliation, uh, each time that you ask a question to coach or the student athletes. And those individuals using Zoom, we just ask that you use the hand feature. We are recording this press conference, and we ask that uh, there's no use of cell phones or cameras. Thank you. And now we welcome to the stage uh, Southeast Missouri. In the middle is uh, Chris Harris, who led the Red Hawks this evening with 23 points. Uh, next to him, Philip Russell, 15 points, 10 assists. And uh, their head coach, uh, Brad Korn. Uh, coach, before we get to questions, uh, just your thoughts on, on the season and uh, your team's effort here tonight. I thought our effort today was a prime example of how these guys and how our team has been all season long. Uh, it's not looking good. We're down 10 in the second half. And that's all these guys have done all season long is continue to fight and claw and make timely shots and make big plays and get defensive stops. Put, put yourself right back in, in position to maybe take the game. And free throws and rebounding cost us uh, that opportunity. But again, when I look at Chris Harris, Philip Russell, and the rest of the guys on the team, what they were able to do for this, this program, this university to play on this stage, a uh, pretty remarkable end uh, to the season, and really couldn't be more proud of the way that they uh, went about their business and, and really never stopped, never gave up, and continued to fight. And I think that's a lot that we can be proud of um, for our institution, our, our region, uh, and the future of our program. At this time, we open up questions for our student athletes. Second row. Jeff Bowden from KFES and Cape Girardeau. Uh, Phil and Chris, it, the rhythm that you guys found in the OVC tournament, it just seemed like for the first maybe 30 minutes of this game until that 10-point deficit and the run you guys went on just wasn't really there. What were they doing that prevented you guys from really finding that? Chris? Uh, first off, well, I just want to thank my teammates. Uh, they, they played a great season and great uh, – Great conference tournament, and they played as hard as they could tonight. It just didn't, the ball didn't bounce uh, the way we wanted it to. And I want to give credit to <coughs> uh, our opponents because they did. Uh, they made it hard on us, 
on offense. I would say they they denied, I would say, both of us, really, for the majority of the game. Uh, so we had to figure out ways around that. But honestly, uh, I think it really comes down to us and what we what we can do. And I don't think we went out there and executed how we can execute for a full 40 minutes. So I really think that's where uh, we fell short tonight. Philip. <clears throat> well, um, I me mean, honestly, I don't, I don't really think they did. I don't really think they did anything to. Well, basically, it was all on us. I say um, they denied us hard, but we seen it all year. We know how to step off, and we just did. I really feel like we just beat ourselves today. We didn't do uh, things that we usually do, and as you can see, we fell short. So it, yeah, they played hard. I took my hat to them, but it wasn't really nothing that we never seen. So I just say this L was on us. Other questions for our student athletes? Second row. To both of you guys again, I mean, to to look up and see the, the fan section that traveled from the Cape Girardeau and, and really all the SEMO fans everywhere. Um, and that's something that you guys brought. So I know it's not the result you wanted, but to know that you helped bring this program to a new level it hasn't seen in so long, to see so many people wrap around that. I mean, how special is a moment like that for you guys? Philip? Um, to me, it's very special. I know to the guys it was very special. Uh, believe it or not, uh, they gave us a boost. The crowd was in it today. It was a great atmosphere. Uh, we needed them here. I feel like um, if if they wasn't here, it was gonna be hard to for us to create energy. So I want to uh, give a special shout out to them, and I appreciate y'all for that. And Chris, uh, I would say the fans uh, were great. The fan base we have is awesome. Uh, four years ago, when I first got on campus, uh, there the Show Me Center was pretty much empty every game. So to be able to go from that to this year, it's louder than I ever I've ever heard it before and then we have obviously selection Sunday it's packed out and then we come to the game today and see the support that like you said traveled it's it's awesome because that's what we said we wanted to do when coach corn first took the job and he called me and because we didn't know what was going on and he was like first things first I'm, my mission and my goal is to change the image and perception of the program and I feel like we've done that up until this point and that was uh, the way I wanted to finish out my career. So, like Phil said, huge shout out to our fan base, and we appreciate you guys coming. Any more questions for Chris or Philip? Gentlemen, a, a terrific season. Uh, Philip Russell, all tournament team, first team, all OVC. Uh, Chris Harris was the MVP of the OVC tournament. Uh, congratulations. And, and best of luck moving forward. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. We now open up the floors. You, you guys are free to go. Thank you again. Uh, questions for Coach Corn. Second row. Jess Todd, KFS, Cape Girardeau. Uh, Coach, I'll ask you the same question I asked them. When you look up, I, I know close game down the stretch, it's not the result you guys wanted, but especially the way that everybody was roaring down that stretch when you guys were making the comeback. I mean, how special is that to know of everything that you wanted to have this program become the last couple of years? I feel like tonight was a good example of what it is now. I, it's, hard to, uh, it's, it's hard to put that into words. That's not easy. You're, you're playing on a Tuesday night, and people's time and people's money is very, very important. Those are things that people work very hard for. And to sort of sacrifice that to come watch us play in the NCAA tournament, it, it shows the, the heartbeat of what our program and fan base can be and what's, what they want to see and what it ultimately can be moving forward. So for them to, to do that, to take your hard-earned time, your hard-earned money, uh, to show support for us, I think, again, it verifies the hard work that you put in as a staff, as staff families, as players, that what you're doing is right and that people see that, they respect that, they honor that by giving their time and making the sacrifices financially to come and support us. And so I, you can tell by the answers that Chris and Phil gave, they see it, they feel it. We felt it all season, slowly building. Big contingency came for Evansville championship game. And so hopefully this is, as you mentioned, the beginning of what we can become. 
third row. Chad Winch from the Barn Media Group. Coach, what was the message to the team in the locker room? Just, I, I wanted them to understand, and they, and they probably don't, but just the impact that they've been able to have on our region and our university by what they've done and what they accomplished. I think it's, going to, it's something that's going to take root in them 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line. Uh, but the text messages that I get, the emails that I get from people that truly, truly care about the program and what it means to them in their personal lives, uh, that's, what, that's what we needed. That's what our program needed. Uh, I think that's what Southeast basketball can be. And so I wanted them to understand that because in that moment, that's a crushing moment. Your career is over for Chris, Nate, and Israel. Uh, and so I just wanted to reaffirm to them uh, all the good that had happened up to that point because it was a uh, up and down season to say the least. Uh, but I think a lot of the people that coach, coach for everything in the middle, not the highs and not the lows, it's everything in the middle uh, that make it all worthwhile. And, and there was a lot of the middle for us this season and I, I wanted them to, to understand that, honor that and respect that, uh, especially in that moment when it's a, it's a crushing, crushing moment. We'll, we'll jump online via Zoom. Uh, Mike, go ahead with your question to coach. Yeah, Brad, how important will it be that this is a step in the right direction you want to go and not the end all, as, as, despite how good this year was? Yeah, I, I think that gives us the energy that we need as we move forward. Uh, you know, when we, we get to design a ring, we get to hang a banner, and now everything that we do moving forward is going to be geared and, and centered around that. And so, as I said before, some, some uh, validation uh, just because now it's not just words. There was actions behind those words, and now we have tangible proof of what, if we do it this way and we do this and we do this and we do this, we can do that again. And so I think it's just as a, a, an opportunity for our guys to really grab hold of something that happened that they did, that they accomplished, and it's no longer, no longer just words. And so now moving forward, there's a standard now uh, and, a, and a level that we have to get to each and every single day and everything that we do in order to have this feeling and in order to, have, to be able to uh, come back again. Second row. Jeff Stout, KFS, Cape Girardeau. Coach, with Chris and Nate and Israel too, um, with ending your careers, as you mentioned, more so Chris and Nate, just with how much turnover the team's had recently, how much of those two guys meant to the program and to see them get to this stage in their last game, uh, just overall for you? Yeah, just Nate and Chris, I, I told them after in the locker room, Jess, like you can't, I couldn't have scripted a better thing for Chris Harris. You know, you get your thousandth point. Uh, you've got two degrees. Uh, you're going to win an OVC championship. You're going to play in the NCAA tournament. Like what? That's that's a full that's a full book, and you can't write it any better. Uh, happy for Nate Johnson to be the one guy on our roster that played it and started every single game. He's the only guy, and he had a year taken away due to injury. And so to stick with it, and uh, when all the turnover is going on, Chris stuck with it. Nate stuck with it, uh, and then for Israel to join us, you know, at, at taking a chance on us with 10 months left in his basketball career. And then putting all that together, going through the ups and downs. And so to see it through on the other side, it just, that's what it's supposed to be about. I know we get caught up in all the other stuff in the world and in the microwave society, but to see Chris kind of be an outlier in that respect and for Nate to stick it out and for Israel to jump on board and not be a distraction and be a man of character the way that he is and represent us the way he does. Uh, to me, there's, there's still hope out there for, for, uh, for the good guys, and those are all three good guys. Mike, another question uh, via Zoom? Yeah, just one more, Brad. It's been a while back when you played at Mizzou, but I asked you then if that schedule and playing those kind of games was <laughs> going to be you know, what you needed it to be to get you where you wanted to go. How important was the schedule now that that's all said and done? I still feel the same way, uh, that it was too hard. But at the same time, I think that it did prepare us. It, it gave us some adversity. And I, I really believe that it was a reason why we were able to win four games in four days at the end of the season. Uh, but it, it really, uh, adversity reveals character. And we didn't splinter from one another. That doesn't mean that we didn't have some uh, spirited practices and conversations along the way. Uh, but we didn't splinter, and we, we stuck together. And even in games like tonight, you're down 10. And, and all those uh, experiences along the way and the tough schedule, I think, prepared us for it. And it, it made, 
the Mizzou game you referenced, but it just no stage or no opponent was too big. And so when you get in on, on these stages or you, if we were to win and go play a number one overall seed like Alabama and you've now played a, a Missouri and so Iowa, just you have to prepare your guys in the regular season for the postseason. So I think it did that. Um, but as a coach and we didn't win as many as I wanted to, I, I'd say that it was too hard. Back row, far side. Southeast Arrow. Uh, coach, obviously you get in a position like this to be playing in the NCAA tournament and you have the, the guys like Chris Harris, the seniors, but you also have some younger guys. What's, what's the most important takeaway some of these younger guys can learn from today's uh, to build in the next year? Yeah, I, I think that it's, it's now a guy like Evan Ursher and even though Adam and Richard a year ago, two, guys, two freshmen, they've now started their careers by going to the NCAA tournament. And so now what do you want for the rest of your career? Do you want to continue to go to the NCAA tournament? Do you want to walk out of SEMO and say, I went to four straight NCAA tournaments? You know, do I, I want to be a multi-champion? Uh, I think that's the, the thing for them, and that's the motivator. You're always looking for motivation. You always have to look for things to get you out of the hard days because uh, it's, it's the guys that show up on the days that they don't want to are the ones that have success. And so now a championship-level team or a championship-level run that we had, that gets you out of bed in the days that you don't necessarily want to. And so as a freshman, that now instills what we're going to try to do and move forward with the program. And even though he's not a freshman, but a guy like Dylan Branson. And so now we bring other people into the program. It's like, no, we do it this way because this is how we won a championship. And so again, it just goes back to that validation uh, of what you're doing is going to be held up now by the players and it's not just coach driven or just words on a chalkboard. It's tangible, real life um, effort, blood, sweat, tears that went into that to make it happen and everybody knows that now and it's got to be a consistent message of what the standard now is. One more question. Yeah, uh, Blake, Blake Showalter, Southeast Arrow. To kind of piggyback on your impact on the program, What's your message to your guys after 23 years of not going to March Madness and finally coming this year and winning the OVC championship? What is your message to your guys about how proud you are of them and just your overall message to uh, the program and also, of course, like your guys and the younger guys as well? Yeah, I'm, I'm always going to be a deflect uh, guy. I'm not, I'm not going to take any credit. Of course, I you know head coach and all that stuff, and uh, that comes with the territory. But there's so many people that go into that. You know, you never, I think the message to the guys is that there's not, there's not just one player, there's not just one coach. You know, I said in my introductory press conference, it's, it's a combination of a whole lot of people uh, pulling in the same direction. So, uh, but to say that you're not proud of that, yeah, I'm not going to be that coy uh, or that bashful about it. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. But again, it's, it's one of those things that if, you, if your dreams aren't big enough to get you out of bed, you got the wrong dreams, you know, or you're in the wrong place. And so now we got to go do it again. And that's the beautiful thing about coaching and leading a group of young people. Uh, is college basketball doesn't care what you did yesterday. And so now tomorrow we got to get right back at it. And if we want to be sitting here again, and I think that's the message to the guys and to to understand that it, it does take a team. That's why basketball is the greatest sport in the world. You can't just it's not just one guy. It's not just one coach. It's a whole lot of people pulling in the right direction. And if we want to get back here someday, if we want to be multi champions, now we know how to do that. Coach, thank you so much. Congratulations on a fantastic season. Thank you. Winners of the Ohio Valley Conference, uh, Southeast Missouri, and uh, Coach Brad Korn. Again, Hammond Communications posts the recording of this press conference. Uh, you can find that NCAA Veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you.